Hello and welcome back to Precalculus. This is the second part of our modeling with exponential functions. And we are going to talk about uh, exponential decay, which would help us with a lot of these um, uh, problems in uh, environmental sciences and <laughs> medical field, even history, right? And anthro uh, and uh, archaeology, right? When you do carbon dating, and then also nuclear decay. Right? And I said environmental, which is also nuclear and garbage, garbage decay. So what is exponential decay? It's, it's a loss of some kind. And um, generally, when we talk about decay, we talk about the loss of mass. Right. So your uh, function would be mass equals me to the kt, where k is negative. Right. And uh, through time the mass over here the m is lost so this is this is just mass and this over here is initial mass so on this little graph we have m and then we have a capital m for the initial mass so what is this initial mass well that's amount of let's say garbage on a pile and then you flatten it you put the you put a you know, uh, soil on it, right? And then, um, and then you build the development, and then you wonder why people have six arms and two heads. So, initial mass is the amount, initial amount of garbage, and that that decays through time, and decays and decays and decays and now it de depends whether it's organic kind of garbage or inorganic kind of garbage how much plastic is there and rubber like these things that do not decay too well i mean they decay just a long time from our puny perspective because what we live up to like 100 years if if a bag takes 10,000 years to decay right we would think like yeah that's that's a long time but planet's been around like five billion years so it's actually not in terms of the planet but in terms of us right so yeah there is that part okay so now in order for us to talk about decay we want to first uh, learn about the half-life which is a particular time that we need to use in these calculations so half-life which is denoted with this lambda symbol just like in a video game right so half-life lambda is time in which initial mass decays to a half of its value guys that literally means if you dump in, uh, if you dump three pounds of garbage you have to wait lambda amount of years for that three pounds to decay down to 1.5 pounds so this lambda is time in which this happens you have lambda given for your uh, radioactive elements, but it's also there for pretty much anything else that decays through time, right? Because it's not just gamma radiation, you can like alpha radiation, like we all decay at all time. And there is a uh, way to measure all of that. So one of my favorite problems of all time, right, is the uh, toothpaste problem yes a toothpaste called Doramad if you never heard of that one maybe one day you can look it up maybe now you can open a browser and typing in Doramad right it's like what is this and you will see that the Doramad was the first ever uh, teeth whitening toothpaste right it, that was the first one made and it was very very popular until people started dying insanely, right? And then everyone backpedaled quickly 
and said, no, we cannot use Doramad and so on. Wait, people died from toothpaste? Yes. Why did they die? Because the active ingredient of toothpaste to make the teeth beautiful was isotope of thorium-229, which is radioactive element which, get, which kills you. Now, this being on the market in 1940s, right, 1943 and so on, clearly people didn't know right, including, uh, well, probably people that producing producing war now because they, they, their workers had to be dying, but, um, you know, people in general, right, didn't know about dangers of radiation, right, when some radioactive elements can um, develop serious uh, health issues, right, primarily cancers of different kinds, and eventually kill you. So, Doramad was using thorium, isotope, right? So there was uh, thorium in um, um, like TH229 and the half-life for, uh, for it half-life lambda is 7,000 Right, 7,340 years. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if you have a, a pound of thorium, you have to wait 7,340 years for it to decay down to a half a pound of thorium. So now, I want to know, right, um, how much thorium is still on the teeth, right, percent-wise, uh, on the teeth of all of the people that brushed, right, their teeth to have them uh, bleached and, and white and beautiful? I just want to know how much thorium is still on those teeth. We already said, I mean, being that it's 1943 and so on, clearly... Right, they're all dead. But how much thorium is there? So we have our equation. And now I'm going to use the half-life definition to figure out K. Okay, so I have some amount M, which is initial amount. Some people brushed more, some people brushed less, right? So we're just going to call whatever amount they used, and it's going to be capital M. E to the K to the 7,340 years. And what happens in this time? Your original mass of what you used gets cut in half. So that's the definition of the half-life. So I use the definition of the half-life, this red sentence up there, to create this equation here. Now look what happens. If you divide both sides by big M, it cancels. So it doesn't matter if you use just a little bit or you just add a half a tube every time, right? We have one half equals E to the 7,340K. We hit this equation, right, both sides with ln to kill off E, and ln of one half we can compute in our calculator, right, because we do have this uh, ln button, right, so ln of 0.5, and then we want to keep at least four decimals, so negative 0.6931, and on the other side, you have 7,340K. So from here, you have your K, right? You divide this number by 7,340, and you get 0 0.00009433. And it's a negative. There we go. So that's your K. And that makes your equation now the thorium-based model. 
0000943T. You have your mathematical model. So see, you always need some kind of extra piece of information, right, to calculate this, this K. This K is different for every radioactive element, right? So we use the half-life, which is something that you obtain when you go online and you, and you take a look at it. And uh, yeah, now you, have, now you have this. So you might want to know, right, so let's say from 1943 to 2021, right? What's the difference here? Right? Well, 11 minus 3 is 8, and then 11 minus 4 is 7. So 78 years was the time frame between the Doramad and today. So you want to know what percent of original amount is still there on the teeth, on the corpse's teeth, 78 years later, meaning today. And that's a very simple um, question to answer, because you are going to say, you're asking which percent of the original amount, so that's P times M, right? And then you have the rest of your equation. Whoops. In 78 years, right? So your time is 78 years. See, this is the percent of the original amount. That's That's the leftover, right? That's your that's your mass that it's on it now. But that mass is obviously less than what it was when it was applied. So now it's going to be some percent of the original mass. Now, again, this original mass drops because this is literally a percentual answer. And all you need to do is to compute this in your calculator because this now is just a basic calculation, right? Times 78. And um, let's see what we have. So this number times 78, good. And then E raised to the answer, hoo hoo, 0 0.993. Yes, 99.3% of thorium is still there on their teeth 78 years later only 0.7 of that radioactive thorium of that toothpaste decayed only 0.7 in 78 years that's crazy right it just makes you know how insignificant we are without Wow, because 78 years, like for some people, that's a lifetime, right? They die when they're 78. So, wow, right? Wow. And 99.3% um, still there. Wow. We can do carbon dating to say how old something that we dug up is now it has to be organic you can't you can't go and carbon date the pyramid because it's made out of stone and stone is not organic so it doesn't contain uh the isotope of of carbon c14 but if you find a wooden spoon or a or a or some kind of clay dish that had organic paint on it because all of the paints were made from from flowers and things. Uh, I believe a couple of years ago, 10 years ago or something, they um, made an argument that uh, a painting that they found in some attic was another Leonardo's painting. They did carbon dating, obviously, on the, uh, on the, the paint, right? You, you chip a little bit of a paint from the, from the back side of the painting, and then you figure out how much carbon C14 is in it. 
and uh, you can uh, fairly accurately right um, calculate how old that those flowers from which the paint was made are and obviously you're not going to have a paint uh, in you know 15 centuries sit on a shelf for for 300 years and then be used so it's very you know it's it's a pretty accurate uh, calculation and um, uh, it is very useful calculation obviously so Carbon dating is another really cool um, thing for us. Let me see if I can find a carbon dating actually problem in the. There is one with a with a Dead Sea Scrolls that is ex, uh, explained in the book. You can go and and, and read that one. Uh, I want to go into the homework section and find um, find something over there. So. Let's go and take a look at the homework section, carbon dating. Okay, those are the population problems. And then we'll go to the medical. I just need to find... Okay, prehistoric cave, this is problem 19. And I think 20 has similar. Yep, skeletons were found. Good. So prehistoric cave paintings were discovered in, in a cave uh, in France. The paint contained 15% of the original carbon uh, C14. Uh, estimate the, the age of the, of the painting. Right. So, at what time someone drew those those pretty pictures? Right. So, carbon dating problems. Right. They unfortunately in the book they gave you the formula for it, which is not good. I want to go and look for um, the half life. Give me one second to just find the, real quick the half life of uh, of C14. Uh, it is five thousand seven hundred and fifteen years. So that's the that's your uh, half life for for the carbon. Okay. So what do I have? We always start with our mass equation, kT, and uh, we are going to use the half-life to figure out k. So, half of the mass is gone, half is left, e to the k times 5,715. This is the same calculation as before, right? m kills m, you have your one-half equals, leave some space, e to the 5715k, and then you put ln on both sides. Boom. So now, uh, ln of half, we had that before, it was 0 0.6931. Negative 0 0.6931 is equal to 5715k. So now we divide these two numbers, and we are going to have our um, our k, five thousand seven hundred and fifteen. So that gives me the k to be negative zero point one two three zeros, and then one two one three. Okay. So this is my this is my k, and that makes my model this so the beginning of the question asking how many years it would take for 15 percent um, of c14 to disappear that's technically what it's asking uh we just know we we know that that's the same amount as how old the the actual paintings are so we are looking for the uh 
paintings, but technically what the question is asking is uh, how long, how much time has passed so that the 100% of C14 that was there decay down to 15%. Does it make sense? Oh, okay. Gotcha. So it's not, when, it's not that it like lost 15% of its mass. There's only 50% of the mass left. Left, yes. Which is why okay. we're going to have now 0 0.15 of the original mass is left. And then we cancel those M's. Oops, I forgot the T. Holy nightmare. There's a T right there. T right there. And you have your now 0 0.15 is equal to E to negative 0 0.000 1213T. You hit both sides with LN. That kills E. So now we need LN of 0 0.15. LN of 0 0.15 is negative 1.87. Eight nine seven one equals to negative zero point zero 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 one two one three t. So now divide this by negative point zero 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 one two one three, and we get t equals fifteen thousand six thirty nine point nine years now clearly this is a terrible number to present in your paper right so you would say about 15 and a half thousand years right uh if you are talking to people because you can't you can't know this i mean you you can't really um because there, there's rounding error there's a lot of lot of stuff so i would answer about 15.5 thousand years and that's how old the cave cave drawing is so it's, it's really cool calculation i mean can tell you how old stuff is it's not exact but it's pretty damn close and it, it's it's really really cool to to be able to to do these kind of things now obviously you need special night equipment to measure the carbon inside the uh, inside what you're measuring, but come on, right? Something that was there for like fifteen and a half thousand years, right? we know when it was drawn. That was that's that's amazing. So that was your that was your uh, archaeology and and history, right? You want to study, you want to study, let's say people. So you take a look at the carbon um, C14 isotope within this uh, organic matter. So again, you can't carbon date the stone which means you can't do this on a pyramid, but you can do this on the things that you dig around the pyramid, right? So that's, that's something to consider. How about some Xanax, anyone? Now, you can actually go online and figure out the half-life uh, for any medication. I'm just picking on, on problem... 30, 31. Uh, problem 30 has uh, aspirin. And um, you can go on and, and take a look like the Advil is 1.9 and so on. So Xanax has the, the half-life in the bloodstream 36 hours. So Xanax is a tranquilizer used in the short-term relief of uh, symptoms of anxiety. Its half-life in the bloodstream is, is 36 hours. How long will it take for Xanax to decay to 90% of its original value? So you want 90% left, right? So that's what you want, 90% left. Calculation, guys, is always the same. You start your mass, initial mass, which is actually initial dose, um, E, to the KT. Plug in your half-life information. Half of the mass remaining when we have 36K, right? When time is 36, lambda is time. So you plug it in for T. M and M cancels. 
Neg uh, and then you hit both sides with ln, right? And you have your negative 0 0.69, was it 3, 1 or 1, 3? 3, 1, good. Equals to 36k. K, one well, here, k equals, all I need to do is to divide this uh, negative point. 6931 by 36 and you get negative 0 0.01925 notice that i always have four significant digits not four decimals that's not the same four significant digits the zeros before are not significant right because they don't have any numbers to to bring to the table. So in, it, they don't show up in a scientific notation right in front of the number. Same thing here. See? Four significant digits. I had three zeros and then four significant digits. Previous problem. Again. Boom. Four significant digits. I had now four zeros prior to that number. So every single time I keep four significant digits. And that gives me the math model that I need to use for Xanax. So this is Xanax model. What do I want to know? How long do I have to wait for it to reach 90%? I don't know why 90, but that's, that's what they have. So, well, that's what we're going to compute. M's again cancel. Then when you hit both sides with LN, you have LN of 0 0.9 equals negative 0 0.01925 T. So LN of 0 0.9 is negative 0 0.105 Three six equals to negative zero point zero one nine two five t. So now we just divide by this number zero one nine two five, and we have five point forty seven or five point five t equals five point five hours. So it takes um 90 um it takes 90 sorry it takes 5.5 hours only to dissolve 10% of of Xanax uh pill so 5.5 hours to absorb for the bloodstream to absorb uh only 10% because 90 is left remember that's why we, that's why we had a, a 0.9 of the original amount. When you have 0.9 of the original amount, that means you are leaving 90% on the pile, right? So you can actually compute every time. Now, see, with, with dosing the medication, guys, um, it goes through the exponential function. Now, see, when you have the exponential decay, in time, if this is the mass, which is how many grams or milligrams, like a, like a pill is 300 milligrams, 500 milligrams, right? That's going to be grams. That's the mass on the y-axis. And uh, this is time, right? In hours, days, whatever. So you can see that when you take a pill of, let's say, 200 milligrams, you wait some time, it's less. You wait some time, it's less. You wait sometimes, it's less. When does the, the amount of, of the medication go to zero? The answer never. Is never, very good, never. Because it's not going to cross it. And you don't get to live in, infinitely to actually see it go down into zero. So I don't know if the technology exists or, or doesn't, but there, there, there should be some kind of 
way to detect every single thing you ever took since you were one day old until today. Because that's what the graph tells us, right? That's what the math tells us. So when you say, oh, I'm going to take 400 uh, two pills or milligram of, let's say, Advil, right? Well, Advil has a two-hour half-life. It's 1.9, but I'm just going to call it two-hour. So think about it, right? And they say take take uh, two pills every four hours while symptoms persist. So take plus 400 every four hours, right? That's the two, two pills every four hours. So you took the dose of Advil. That's 400 milligrams. The half-life of two hours cuts this in half. So two hours later, you have 200. Two hours later, how much do you have? left in the bloodstream. Guys, half life is two hours. Half 100. life. 100, thank you. But then what do you do? Because that's four hours over here total. You pop another 400, two pills. So how much do you have in your system? 500. Mm -hmm. Two hours. Can I ask a question real quick? Mm -hmm. Um, for the last one, the new equation um, that you made after you figured out K is when, when you're saying M equals, is it going to be a capital M or the lowercase m? Lowercase m is the current mass. This is initial mass. They're different. So when you're putting the 0 0.9 next to the M, why does it turn into a capital? Because you are taking 90% of the original value. Oh. Right? Okay. Because that's the... Gotcha. yeah. All right, that makes sense. Thank you. All right, so now let's redo this. So 400 grams, two hours later becomes 200 grams. Two hours later, 200 becomes 100, and then you pop two pills in, right, For for, for uh, because the symptoms persist. Now you have 500. In two hours, you have 250. In another two hours, you have 125. And then what do you do? Because there, there's been four hours, you pop another pill. So now you have 525. You see how it, 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 it keeps the dosage goes up, even though you are following right the prescribed the prescribed dosing. Every time you take a pill, even if you take the pill when it's prescribed, which obviously you should, right? Um, the, the dose in the system is increased from where you initially started taking the dose. So now you have 525 milligrams in your body. You wait two hours, right? That's half of that. What's that? 250, 2, 262.5. 262.5. Then I waited two hours. Then you wait another two hours. It's half of that. That's 131.25. And then what you do? Boom. Plus 400. Now you have 531.25. So you see that you started with 400 milligrams, and then there is a 500, and then it's 525, and then it's 531. So every time you take a new dose, right, it goes, it, it, you know, with 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 uh, pills and drugs that are that are addictive, right? Yeah, it's going to like if you can help it any time, like those painkillers and other things, like don't. Like yeah, I know it hurts. But the rest of the life can be gone because right, you, you couldn't clench teeth for like two hours. So think about these kind of things. I understand there are situations when you, when you have to, right? But for a broken arm, no. It's, it, there's no excuse. I had a broken rib and a broken collarbone two times, and I never took anything for it. And I'm a guy, apparently females have a higher threshold, threshold for pain. So I was like, eh. Broken bones do, do not really warrant painkillers. And I, I said it in public. It's like they, they create way more problems for you than, than what they fix. Yeah, you're going to be crying for some time. Wipe your tears and, and move on.
So, and, and, and you see why, right? Because this is Advil. I mean, harmless technically. But think about any of those um, heavy-duty painkillers. With the prescribed dose, the dose constantly goes up, which is what we see through Half-Life, very simply, right? So that's why it's so easy to get hooked up, right, to those, uh, those painkillers. And then when the prescription... Um, Especially for the people that just refill it and keep taking it because they just don't want to feel an ounce of pain, right? And then it's like, okay, oxy, 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 and then it's just gone, right? The doctor will not prescribe it anymore. You were on it for like three, four weeks. So what's next? Heroin, right? That's how the... I, I watched a couple of documentaries because I was interested in how this craziness with the uh, with the drugs started and um, yeah most of it is there technically right so kind of try to <laughs> to wean off of it and clench your teeth a little bit all right well guys that's that's technically it can i do the same problem for garbage yeah like the same formulas work for garbage we did the xanax here we did the um Carbon C14, we did the, the nuclear here, which is, I didn't do plutonium and uranium, but you can go and do that for, you know, any nuclear disaster or, or the uh, atomic bomb or whatever, right? You can do that. We did it for thorium, but replace this with, with uranium or plutonium and you can, right, they have their half-lives and you can calculate. The book is full of those examples. Um you want to talk garbage disposal, right? And, and, and yeah, you can, right? Garbage disposal is going to be the same thing because it decays. It's going to have half-life for plastic and half-life for this and half-life for that. So if you're in, in environmental studies, you can, you can take a look at that. The garbage is a huge issue for us. Huge issue, right? Uh, not for the planet. The planet doesn't care. It's, it's a dead rock that, that bobs around the sun. So whether we have garbage, whether there are people or no people, planet is just fine, right? Just like Saturn is fine, no people on Saturn. Mars is fine, still no people on Mars. We already managed to put some of our rovers and things there, so we start accumulating garbage there, right? Because when it stops working, <laughs> it's, it's a garbage, right? It's very useful when it's working and when it sends images and, and all of the cool things. I, I hope you're... You're following what's happening with the last one, right? With the images, with the sound and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, it's all cool. But when it stops working, it's just a pile of garbage at that point. So the, the, anytime when someone says, save the planet, just, just give me a break. Planet can't care less. Like, you, you can do whatever you want. You can't ruin the planet. The planet is just a rock that goes around the sun. However, environment in which we can't breathe or have clean water, yeah, that's the one that we should, right? So it's valid to talk about environment, but not none of that, you know, oh, save the planet. Yeah, the planet is, is, is fine. You can, we can put the concrete wrapped in plastic, wrapped in rubber for the entire planet. It's still going to rotate around the sun in the same way. It's like we won't be able to survive in that environment, right? If the entire planet is just covered in rubber, because there'll be no food for us to eat and we can't eat rubber, so we will all die, the planet would still be going around, right? And, um, yeah, that's your en environment. So, yeah, we are, it's everything environmental is purely selfish to preserve the human uh, species, to preserve other plant life and animal life, right? That's, and, and it's a worthy cause, and we need to talk about recycling and. And everything that is happening is uh, is really uh, important conversation to have. But please stay away from the cliche "save the planet" because yeah, planet can care less. It's a rock. That's it. Questions, concerns, anything you would like to add, subtract to the to the thing. Going once, going twice, and sold. Okay. 
Well, I'll open the homework and uh, we'll uh, talk hopefully again about these word problems once you try the problems and see how far you can get with this stuff. Bye.